All right, fellas. Uh, it's a sad day because uh, this is the last of the pale. <sighs> the keg kicked yesterday. Um, the dwarf came round, I poured him a pint and it kicked. Which meant I had to have one of the bottles that was in the fridge. There was two left. Which means the last one's in this glass. So I'm going to have to brew it again. I'm going to have to brew it again because it's I can't keep my hands off of it. But today, the video for today, is uh, I've got a message. I've got a message. Chris Hamblin sent me a message a couple of days back. I apologise for not getting around to uh, messaging you back. And then I figured, no, I ain't going to message him back. I'm going to put it in video form so I can talk about uh, what he's asked me. And not only that, it opens up the uh, the door, the, the floodgates. It opens them up to you guys watching to give a bit of advice as well and to uh, comment below. Because everyone's going to be different and everyone's going to have a different opinion on this. Um, and rightly so, because everyone's equipment's different. <laughs> This is what he sent to me. Hi Tom, I follow your YouTube page and enjoy your vids. I mean instantly he's, he's got his head screwed on right. I was hoping for some advice, I have a similar keg setup to you, only difference I can see is that I use a dual body regulator for my two kegs rather than secondary regulators. How do you carb your beers? I am fairly new to kegging and have forced carbonating my last two brews with the rocking the keg method. This has been hit and miss and seems to result in half a pint of foam when I pour my beer. I have since reduced my beer line to 3 16 and I'm now using about 2 metres uh, of beer line, I assume that's what it means. It just says I'm now using 2 metres. I have also fitted a flow controller. Uh, none of this seems to have helped. I was hoping you could share your methods with me. Thanks for your time, Chris. Chris, of course, of course, and not only am I going to share my time, to help you out, why wouldn't I? But everyone else is gonna take the time, I'm sure, to comment below and uh, and help you out. So, let's strap you on the old noodle, and I'll run through uh, the setup. I have the main uh, regulator coming off the gas bottle, which then feeds two secondary regulators. Having the two secondary regulators means that you can uh, control the uh, pressure to each keg independently of the bottle, what's coming out the bottle. Now uh, Clive has been uh, putting out a couple of videos so go and, uh, go and check out his channel for the last couple of homebrew Wednesdays and you can set each uh, regulator to whatever you want uh, so if you've got a keg that's already carved and you're wanting to just um, leave it at serving pressure and your next keg has a fresh beer in it you can set your, your keg that's got the fresh beer in it to uh, carbon pressures and leave the uh, other one at serving pressure. So what I do is, before I uh, get around to the gas situation, let's show you the beer line. So these are the two beer lines. And by the way, this is not, probably not the, uh, the best way to do it. Uh, but it works for me. So these two beer lines run up the back of here to the, to the taps. And that's it. That's a, that's basically most of the beer line. There's only that, and then a tiny amount in here that just goes to the uh, kegs. Uh, so a couple of people. This is where it will get. Um, this is where you'll get people telling you different things, which is fine because everyone does it differently in, uh, for their equipment. Um, you'll have a few people like Sam the Thrifty Brewer who will have the beer line curled up, keg fridge, you'll have it curled up, uh, a lot of you do that, I don't tend to do that, because I haven't got the room in the fridge to do that, to do that, <laughs> so I don't, I just uh, keep the lines pretty short actually, and then what I do is, I will set the keg, depending on when I want to start drinking it, like the pail I wanted to start drinking it, uh, fairly soon, fairly quickish. So I will set the regulator to 30 psi for a couple of days, but I'm trying it. If I'm wanting it sat at 30 psi for a couple of days to see how that's going to carbonate it, I will check it the next morning just to see how much carbonation's gone in there. And I just keep checking it till it's right, and then I knock it down 
to serving pressure. I don't tend to rock them, I don't rock the kegs, I tend to over carbonate them and it's very difficult to knock that gas out the keg and out the beer once it's over carbonated. There are ways to do it, videos out there, but I tend to just put enough in. Uh, normally, if I'm not wanting it to sort of carb up quick, like the stout, I set the stout at uh, 20 psi and just kept an eye on it over over a week until I'd got it to where I'd got the right amount of carbonation in it and then knocked it down to serving pressure. And that way I don't have any foam up. I don't have any foam up, I don't have any um, sort of half glasses of foam or anything like that, even with this short length of uh, tubing. And this tubing goes uh, up here, and if I move this, if I move that, it then goes through these John Guest fittings here, into these tiny, tiny beer lines. What are they? What are they? I can't see. I can't see. Someone will put below what it is. It's the uh, Clyde now. It's the it's the size that comes off the off the tap, and that's it. So that's just a quick uh, quick look at my setup. But like I said at the start of the video, everyone's going to have a different opinion on how to carbonate the beer and to how to how to do that with the equipment they've got. And uh, these opinions are valid because you can pick out different parts from different people that suit your setup. So your setup. I mean, how I've got it running now, with the short beer lines and everything, how I carbonate the, the kegs will be different to how someone carbonates them, like Sam, the thrifty brewer, with uh, with a long length of, of tubing and, and how he sets up his kegs. So take little parts of everyone's comments, uh, fit them best to how your setup works, and try that out. And if it doesn't work, then come back and we'll try and help you again. Oh, now let's pour a pint, uh, or let's pour one of these of the uh, stout, and I'll show you that that stout's been sat in there for uh, probably a month, probably more. But yeah, that's been sat in there all that time. It ain't carving up any more than uh, than what it is, and we shall uh, pour one. Oh, there you have it, fellas, there you have it. The perfect pour for a stout. I don't know, you just need to tinker around with the setup you've got. Um, like I say, my setup's not ideal. I should have more beer line um, to reduce foamage and, and things like that. But uh, give it enough time and enough tinkering around and you'll get the pressures right to suit what you've got. Like that. By the way, this stout is drinking really, really, really nice with a bit of age on it. My goodness. And that's it, guys. That's it. I hope that helps, Chris. Um, it was a bit of an impromptu video, so if it doesn't, get back to me. Um, I'll get back to whoever's leaving comments. Uh, I have got some more questions I'm going to be answering in the week. Uh, this is just a quick one, so I'll get it up tonight. Oh, my goodness. So, as always, don't forget to thumb up this video. Kids are doing what I want to do. Don't forget to subscribe. So, little red button down here. Subscribe. Click it, you won't miss out. Go to next. And uh, share the video. Go to the other. But all to see. And until next time, I'm out of here.